welcome to the last vlog of the Political Report. For those of you who may be new, uh, we are a team of political enthusiasts that aim to educate readers and evaluate past political strategies and mobilize the next generation of thinkers to apply what we teach them in reviewing politics, not only in the present day, but forevermore. I'm Naomi, I am the developer of the Political Report. Now, over the last several weeks, we have reviewed uh, many different media channels and we've looked about how these specific media outlets, we've looked at the history of them and how they affect society and especially how they relate to politics. Now, in our final vlog today, we are going to be looking at how the difference, the history of media has had an impact on certain freedoms um, that our country has and how this has specifically impacted society. So we're gonna jump right in today. I'm gonna to be reviewing um, the history of media and how it's affected specific rights within society. Ever since the beginning of America, our country has been founded on one of the basic principles of freedom of speech and freedom of expressing yourself, um, all of the things. In fact, the very first amendment, which I'm going to read to you guys states, the first amendment provides that Congress makes no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting its free exercise. It protects freedom of speech, the press, assembly, and the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The big thing that I emphasized within that definition was the freedom of the press. Um, that is a very big deal because we as the citizens of America want to have the assurance that we have the access to all of the information that there is to be had. However, a big question that's still um, a big question today is should there be censorship within the press? This was a problem several hundred years ago, even after the First Amendment got passed, just about eight years after that the First Amendment was passed, there were two acts passed that banned the criticism of political leaders. So um, the government wanted to protect certain things that were said about the political leaders and they wanted to prohibit certain things being said in the press. In fact, this may be kind of surprising to a lot of you, but did you know that it, that threatening the president of the US is actual is, is a federal felony under the United States Code Title 18? This also includes presidential, presidential candidates, vice presidents, and former presidents. That's something that's pretty surprising considering some of the tweets that we may have read about Donald Trump or Joe Biden or anything like that, um, but it is actual, actually a federal felony. That being said, um, the First Amendment is designed to further the pursuit of the truth for our society. Um, so that may not protect protect individuals who engage in slander or something that is damaging to another person's reputation. All right, guys, I'm just going to lightning run you through some of Stanley Barron's uh, tips before you post. And these are really great tips. So I am really excited to just give you a rundown. And then Caleb's going to show you how to actually apply these and go a little bit more in depth. So the first one is accuracy, which is, is what you're saying true? And that's pretty straightforward. And then the second one is confirmation, which is just asking, is what you said able to be tried? And is it able to be proven to be accurate? The next one is tenacity. Did you take the easy way out of finding their story or did you really dig and do the work that needed to be done to come up with a good story? The next one is dignity. Did you bash anyone in the process? This is especially relevant in politics. Um, did you bash the other side or did you do your research on both sides? The next one is um, equity. Have you um, used all of your sources and all of the people involved and given them all a fair name? Or um, did you display all points of view? The next one is reciprocity, which says, um, does your story make sure to not talk down on uh, those consuming your media? The next one is sufficiency. Have you used your resources to grab all information needed? Or did you just kind of skim the surface on some? The next one is community, uh, which says, does your story portray that it cares for more than just profit? Which uh, in especially politics is so big. Does your story show that it cares 
more about people than just profit or is it just like a money hole? And lastly, we're going to be looking at diversity. Does your story touch on um, gender, racial, ethnic, and economic uh, diversity that it is surrounded in so just make sure to look at these things before you are posting especially political stories as these are so relevant and important in the world of politics this week we are talking about freedom regulations and ethics in media as you guys are already aware naomi did kind of the history of these subjects and brianna covered the questions that we'll be talking about um, but i'm going to be covering application using these questions and i've kind of got a sample question already prepared of something that would not fit these these question guidelines, um, something that you should not probably say because it doesn't fit against these guidelines here that have been laid out. Um, so a tweet that we at The Political Report have seen quite frequently is something that goes kind of like this, and it is, Second Amendment gun laws are constitutional. Deal with it. So we at The Political Report have seen that kind of format of a tweet or comment quite frequently. It's not a rare occurrence, especially on Twitter. People say things like this that are even more vitriolic and even more, you know, imperative and out there. Um, they say that with, with no abandon. So this is, this is relatively mild, but for the sake of today, we're gonna be covering something a little more mild and we're gonna run it up against a few of these questions here. Right off the bat, we can see that this Second Amendment gun laws are constitutional deal with it comment has a few red flags present. Um, we see that in terms of accuracy, technically Second Amendment gun laws are part of our Constitution. However, in the, proper, in the context of the argument, it's not taking into account other people's opinions, other people's biases, other people's you know, viewpoints on this subject. And that kind of leads me to the dignity aspect of this question. Saying deal with it to people, that is not, that's not considerate of, of them. It's not treating them in a way that we would wish to be treated. It's not a dignified way to approach um, a topic like this, especially such a hot topic like gun laws. Uh, and then insufficiency, are there adequate journalistic resources that have been allocated to all important aspects of an issue? Saying something like this doesn't capture the full scope of an, ar of an argument. It, it makes the other side look like, like they're whining or like they don't know what they're talking about, that they just are like, meh, about gun laws. However, it's quite a bit deeper than that. And having the dignity, um, having the sufficiency to cover the entire topic, the accuracy. And then finally, um, the community is a big one. Where you're from, who you, who you run with, who you talk with, who you mix with. They're all big influencers of how we how we formulate our opinions, especially on something like gun laws. Um, odds are that geographical location will affect that. Family history will affect that. So many aspects. If all of these aspects in these questions do not fit together, your argument will not be considered valid by any number of people because you haven't taken into account these questions and applied them using using the questions laid out. You have to run things that you say online, especially up against these questions, so that they can be accurately digested from what you mean to say. Stirring the pot online doesn't lead to any growth, doesn't help you to achieve your goals at all. So using these questions as a guideline is a very is, is a surefire way, a very helpful way to make sure that you are in as streamlined a way as possible making sure that your audience is hearing, comprehending, and applying exactly what you want to say without any white noise or any mixed signals in between. Once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in with us this week. We really appreciate you sticking around for the TPR, the political report here, through our blogs, through our podcasts, and through our vlogging stage. It's been a great time being able to share this information with you, covering different media outlets and sources and comparing them in the political realm. We've really appreciated all the time that we've had to be able to hang out with you guys and to be able to share as much information as possible. We really hope you enjoyed it. And until we see you again, this is the TPR signing off. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day.